Have you just beaten a 75 to 100 hour platinum and am now looking for something far less time consuming? Or do you just not have the time for something larger? Okay. Then this video is the one for you. And if none of the games on this list tickle the pickle, then I've got two more on the channel that you could check out. And I'm sure out of the 32 games mentioned, there's bound to be at least a few that you guys can add to that platinum collection. Also, as an added incentive, if this video can reach the nosebleed heights of 150 likes, I'll start working on another 10 games that can be platinumed in under 10 hours. With all that said and done, let's get into the first game. Donut County is a puzzle game originally released back in 2018, where the player moves a hole around the ground in order to swallow objects, which in turn makes the hole bigger and bigger. The story is short and centres itself around Mira and BK, a raccoon as the latter causes all of these landscape swallowing holes purely to earn himself enough points so that he can purchase a quadcopter. Adding a couple of puzzles into the gameplay loop and even a boss battle at the end for good measures, Donut County is a fun little title with an easy platinum attached and one that almost every trophy hunter I know already has or at least has on their list of future games to clear. Donut County stands at a 1 out of 10 difficulty, requires just a single playthrough due to chapter select at the end and should take roughly 3 hours to achieve the platinum trophy. Simple work for a simple platinum. Speaking of simple platinums, next up we've got Unpacking, which was released in 2021, originally before hitting PlayStation consoles in 2022. Unpacking is a game about the familiar experience of pulling possessions out of the boxes and fitting them into a new home part block fitting puzzle, part home decoration, you are invited to create a satisfying living space while learning clues about the life you are unpacking. Over the course of 8 house moves, you are given the chance to experience a sense of intimacy with a character you never see and a story you are never told. Admittingly, I honestly just found this to be extremely boring, but I know a lot of people found this somewhat therapeutic and chilling and with the trophy list being simple and short, it almost became a tick box exercise for many. PSNP has unpacking sitting at a 1 out of 10 difficulty, needing just the single playthrough and taking on average 4 hours, if only real house moves only took that amount of time. Speaking of time, I think it's time you hit that like button, subscribe and leave a comment down below telling me all about your quickest and easiest platinums. Either that, or you can just call me a douchebag. Okay. Next we've got Murdered Soul Suspect, which is an action-adventure stealth game where the player takes control of the murdered detective Ronan O'Connor as you solve puzzles in order to hunt down an infamous serial killer. As you make your way through a fictionalised version of the town of Salem, you'll be finding clues, teleporting through and traversing the surroundings, and even possessing NPCs, all in the hopes of learning more about the killer. Originally released in 2014, Murdered Soul Suspect had mixed reviews, with critics all saying the same thing. Some issues here and there, not enough, but just couldn't put the game down. And I'd say that sounds very similar to my own experience, as I don't recall enjoying it too much, but I did stick with it until the Platinum Trophy popped, and that was way back when I wasn't even actively hunting Platinum Trophies. PSNP has Murdered Soul Suspect as a 2 out of 10 difficulty, requiring just the single playthrough and taking roughly 7 hours to complete. Speaking of 7 hours to complete, another game that takes around the same time to Platinum is Sonic Origins, which was released for PlayStation amongst other consoles in 2022 and continued the thankful success of Sonic Mania, where the Sonic team had gone back to the roots of what made Sonic the Hedgehog amazing in the first place. Remastering the original four Sonic games, which consisted of Sonic 1, 2, 3, along with Sonic CD, and also included options to play as alternative characters that were not present in the originals. This was a welcome addition along with a new museum section where you can spend coins earned throughout the game to unlock a whole host of art and music. While not pushing the boat out far enough to be considered a true success, 
Sonic Origins does offer players the chance to experience the main reason why there was a huge boost of gamers in the early 90s, with the added bonus of flushed out animations and other quality of life improvements. Sonic Origins is down as a 2 out of 10 difficulty, requiring just a single playthrough and should take you, on average, 7 hours. Surprisingly, you only have to collect all of the Chaos Emeralds on one of the four titles in order to get Super Sonic for a trophy. Speaking of surprises, Manita, which was a very welcome surprise when it was released in 2020. An action role-playing game where the player assumes control of a shark and must survive in an open world so they can take revenge on a fisherman who disfigured them as a pup and killed their mother. As you swim around the eight different regions of Port Clovis, you'll be granted the ability to discover landmarks, complete side objectives, all while asserting your dominance to the underwater population. Once big enough, you will then have further enemies to knock down the food chain, mainly humans, which will become increasingly annoying and ever-present. With the rarest trophy in Manita being for completing all objectives in each region, you can see why the game is currently standing at a 3 out of 10 difficulty. It's not difficult, just perhaps a little repetitive, but if you can stomach it for the estimated 8 hours during a single playthrough, then this Platinum will be yours with ease. Next up, we've got Heavenly Bodies, which is a space-based adventure and physics game that was released on PlayStation in 2021. Possibly the toughest out of all of the 10 games in this video, Heavenly Bodies is simple enough, but it is recommended to have a guide handy as you plod on through. As you discover the pain of weightless motion, either single player or local co-op, you'll find yourself solving puzzles while also fighting against the elements that a space adventure would bring. The controls can be a little awkward when you first put on the game, but after a short while, it can feel rather smooth and simple enough. If you do go for this Platinum, the best advice that I could give you is to use Newtonian controls first, as it will save you an additional playthrough once you've completed the game. There are some collectibles scattered throughout and challenges on each mission, but these can be completed at the end and do not need to all be completed in a single run. PSNP has Heavenly Bodies sitting at a 4 out of 10 difficulty, requiring a single playthrough and should take you around 8 hours in total. Just enough time to float about in space and maybe catch a glimpse of the moon. Did somebody say moon? Well how about Moons of Madness, which is a first person, story driven, cosmic horror game where the scientific exploration of Mars meets the supernatural dread of Lovecraft. Released in October 2019, the player takes control of Shane Newhart, a technician stationed at the Invictus, which is a state-of-the-art research post stationed on Mars. You'll be tasked with simple duties, all just trying to keep things ticking along until a new team arrive to take over. But of course, nothing is ever as it seems, and poop well and truly hits the fan, as you find yourself dealing with strange and an unusual setback. Now is this game scary? No, not really, but there are certainly a few moments that may catch you off guard and cause one of those mini heart attacks. In terms of difficulty, Moons of Madness is pretty straightforward and set at a 2 out of 10 on Scorpio of Shadows and an estimated time sitting of 4 hours. It requires a single playthrough and then just a reload to get the alternative ending. Then we've got Darker Skies, which is a sequel to Grey Skies, A War of the Worlds story, which had absolutely nothing to do with the original and infamous War of the Worlds, nor did it really have much of a story. In truth, I contemplated leaving this one off the list, because to put it bluntly, the game is absolutely trash. That said, it does fit in with the whole concept of the video being that it can be platinumed in under 10 hours. Darker Skies takes place a couple of years after the Martians had originally landed, but Earth's natural habitat was clearly too rough for their little alien bodies to take, and they all died out. So now, the world is inhabited by roaming zombies, with the vision of Stevie Wonder. 
Stealth is a huge factor in sections of this game and you can be crouched behind a box, clearly too short for you to hide behind and the zombies will walk straight on by. That is, unless they decide to glide across the screen which happens more often than not, specifically when they're attempting to run after you. There is one genuine area throughout the game where the player's only option is stealth, but one rock throw quickly catches the attention of the six or so zombies that are all rushed to the sound and leave the path ahead open. The final boss fight and ending both feel incredibly rushed and don't require too much thought process when tackling them. PSNP doesn't currently have a guide, but Plat Prices has the game down as a 3 out of 10 difficulty, requiring one playthrough and thankfully should only take you 1 to 2 hours, but even then, that's 1 to 2 hours of your life that you probably won't get back. You've been warned. From the darkness of this trash to the vibrant colours of our next entry. New Super Lucky's Tale, which was released in 2019 for the PlayStation and Nintendo Switch after originally being released for Xbox back in 2017. With New Super Lucky's Tale, what you see is what you get. Imagine classics such as Crash Bandicoot or Jack and Daxter. Add a bit more colour, a little additional comedy and make it a ton easier than both and you've got an amazing action platformer that is pretty easy and perfect for beginners. The game follows Lucky as he travels across numerous worlds which each hold a number of secrets and most importantly clover emblems which the player will use to gain access to boss fights throughout the game. Certain levels consist of Lucky moving in one constant direction with a focus on quick reflexes through dodging obstacles which appear on screen through jumping or burrowing whereas others will consist of sliding puzzles marble puzzles where Lucky is shrunk down and contained in a marble ball. The player must tilt the stage and successfully navigate Lucky in order to progress. The only negative from New Super Lucky's Tale is the loading screens which even on PS5 seem to be slightly longer than you'd expect them to be, but it's a minor inconvenience that shouldn't deter you from going for the Platinum. The Amazing Legends over at Powerpix have the game at 3 out of 10 difficulty requiring just the one playthrough and taking 10 hours but if you have any prior experience with Super Lucky's Tale you could easily shave off an hour. And the last game on today's list is 13 which was originally released in 2003 and then remastered in 2020. When the remaster was first released it was hated by new and old players alike due to its poor performance but has since had a number of patches which stabilised the game to an acceptable level, although some people still complain about experiencing issues. The game was that bad when it released in 2020 that the 2003 version outsold it in the first week. Yikes. Set in a comic book style setting, you'll be playing as a man who is suffering from amnesia and his only clue to who he is is the 13 tattoo on his right shoulder. You'll move from level to level figuring out who you are and why you are wanted dead as you will use a whole array of weapons fighting off enemies on beaches, rooftops and missile solo settings. The trophies in 13 are pretty straightforward and the toughest trophy being to complete the game on authentic 13 agent difficulty but this can be done simply by starting the first level on this difficulty, backing out, going on to the last level of this difficulty and completing it. The last level doesn't require any combat at all, so that trophy can be achieved with ease. PSNP has the difficulty at a 3 out of 10, requiring one full playthrough thanks to mission select and should take you, on average, 8 hours. So, what did you think of the games on this list? Will you be tackling any of them and would you like to see 10 more in the future? If you do, then hit that like button and make sure we hit that target of 150 and I'll get cracking. But in the meantime, peace out.